Greetings all. Okay, my name is Mike McDougall. I'm originally from England, then I lived in South Africa for many years, and I now live in Indonesia. Our film Reshaped was shot in Bali in Indonesia. So the inspiration for the film, uh, Matt's Amazing Surfboards, uh, Matt Hames. I'm not an amazing surfer, but when I snapped one of my boards and borrowed one of Matt's, it's amazing. You can just feel the difference. There's a saying with surfers that you can immediately tell about a board if it feels good under your arm. And that's definitely true of Matt's boards. There was something unique about that one. And uh, I remember asking him why he wasn't making them anymore. And he told me the story of his disillusionment with uh, the mass-produced surfboards that taken the element of craftsmanship, of art, out of the production. And that was my inspiration. Um, during COVID, Matt surfed more than 365 days in a row as a kind of um, taking advantage of the situation, but I think also as a little bit of a middle finger to the whole COVID thing. And uh, I, I thought it needed to be marked. So I was there on the 365th day and recorded him and interviewed him. And then we started talking about surfboards. And when I found out later that he was making boards again, I immediately contacted him to discuss like what had changed, what happened. So that was how the movie was inspired. How was the production? Well, production was hard as it usually is. It was arduous, no budget, uh, pulled in all the favors that we could. Matt was amazing organizing everything and we got Rizal to participate, which was a major plus. And uh, then it's just hard work by everybody running around. And it took us a long time to get the edit right, to get all the background information we needed. Indonesia is a, a pleasant place to shoot, but the majority of equipment and expertise is based in Jakarta. There's not much going on in Bali. There are a few good production companies there working, competing really hard for local commercials, etc. But it's mainly people come down from Jakarta or from overseas with their own equipment. There's also, there's no real hunger in Bali, uh, in the acting community, certainly. It's very small. Uh, you do find, I've been very lucky to find a few amazingly talented and hardworking individuals. But in the main, the the ambition and the work ethic that you find in major cities is not there. So that's a factor that does affect uh, production. But this was hard work, but, but fun. And lots of friends pitched in and made it work. The main role of cinema for society. I'm a believer in stories. And I think that one of the most important characters in society is the storyteller. Um, in order to immortalize very fine examples of the th amazing things that human beings are capable of and also to retell uh, the evil that we're also capable of and the horrible consequences. So I think that's extremely important. David Mamet also said that uh, he believes the purpose of um, writing, so he's talking about um, screen and stage productions, is to remove the burden of consciousness. In other words, to make people forget where they are, what they're doing. Most people are not happy with their lives, don't have wonderful, exciting, happy lives. And done well, a good production can take the people out of their everyday life for a while. And that's another role that cinema has in society too. Okay, regarding streaming, metaverses, artificial intelligence affecting cinema. CGI is almost there. I remember watching, a, um, I think it was the opening night in New York of Jurassic Park. And it was the first time that dinosaurs were completely real. There was no suspension of disbelief required. Uh, there, was, you know, there was some fringing. There were a few little artifacts here and there, but dinosaurs became real for me that night. The thing they still struggle with, I believe, is, uh, is human hair, animal hair, but it's, it's near as damn it. And AI is going to remove most actors. Actors are expensive, they are human beings. And once AI has, has extracted the abilities, the capabilities of most actors, uh, they're going to be replaced. P possibly, probably, there will be some exceptions, some amazing actors who will still continue to work. But when almost every artificial actor that can be created is a De Niro, then um, there's not going to be much of a role. Um, theatre is already 
a fringe sport. Not that many people, not the majority of people certainly go and watch theatre productions. So that will still um, inspire and uh, attract and delight people who enjoy the spontaneity and the risk associated with a live performance. Things could go wrong. And there is there can be magic, which is why people will go. So I think that will that will remain. The cult of the actor will will disappear. Apart from Hitchcock, that was pretty much the way the 40s, 50s, 60s, even the 70s were going. It changed when Spielberg and um, Tarantino came on the scene and people went to watch movies because of the director as much as for the actor. Um, but we need to remember that we're in the business of storytelling, which goes back to prehistoric man and prehistoric woman and prehistoric kids in caves listening to the stories um, Again, the good stories to be remembered, the bad stories to be warned about. And it's the storytelling that is the most important. Modern cinema in the 20, 20th and 21st century is just another version of storytelling. Filmmakers get too precious. Um, people were very snobby about digital and even now have to admit that digital, digital can do things that film cannot. But there are still some people who are nostalgic for what film can do and why not if it's appropriate for a particular message or story that you're trying to tell. One thing that I anticipate which I'm excited about is that the focus will shift back onto the storytellers, the writers and away from the actors and to a lesser degree the directors and really good stories I hope will, will come through and possibly writers will start to be compensated fairly. Um, it's well known that the, the recompense for creating what is the most difficult thing ever, which is something new, innovative, creative. It's almost impossible to come up with a new story, but a new way of telling a story. And now hopefully writers will be recognized and compensated properly. OK, hybrid model screening and uh, on uh, screen online festivals, OTT. I think the modern ways to access an audience, OTT, streaming, um, theatrical release, have, like the internet, allowed everybody to have something to say and get it out there. Now that's good and bad because 95% of the internet is crap. But it does mean that people who otherwise wouldn't get a chance do get exposure. The really good thing I believe about OTT is that smaller independent filmmakers can create um, a community. They can, get loyal, they can reach loyal followers who will stick with them and very importantly pay them so they can make fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars for a small film which enables them to live and write something new and then make a new movie and that's something that I think is a real, a real benefit of the new system. Okay, new work that we're involved in. Yep, we're busy now preparing for our first feature film in November. It's the story of a superstar singer just finishing her latest album who is going to kill herself to enhance her social media scores, her followers, her numbers, her hits, go out in a blaze of glory at the top of her profession and her manager trying to talk her out of it. But what they don't realize is that she's checked into um, a special hotel room. They're in Bali and it's room 327, which is the traditional room reserved for the South Sea goddess in various Indonesian legends. And it becomes a ghost story. And we see how the character influences the, uh, the central character who's thinking about committing suicide, her ambivalent friend, and her manager who's trying to talk her out of it. Then the second thing I've just been asked to work on is an amazing idea by an, uh, an Azeri um, creator uh, who, if you're in the media, you'll know that um, a lot of Adobe products have moved to subscription. And his idea is that in the future, with healthcare improving rapidly, um, stem cell research, etc., possibly benefits from mRNA technology, that those who can afford it might be able to live almost forever and on a subscription basis, as long as you can continue to pay for your healthcare and for a new liver or new skin possibly even to have your personality, your biochip rebooted into a whole new body, essentially. And then our central character is an actor who loses his income because his AI 
loses his job. He's not in the soap opera anymore that he's been in for 150 years. And now he's faced with the idea of uh, having to return to the flicker, which is what they call the rest of the world that we live in, with our short, meaningless lives, um, desperately trying to get the money to buy a subscription. So I've got the storyline for that. We're developing that one, and I, I think that's a really fantastic idea. And it gives us the opportunity to explore the value of human life, um, immortality, the, the concept that if something does not have an end, perhaps it has no value, and what a person is prepared to sacrifice for immortality or for what they are prepared to sacrifice their immortality. Thanks for inviting me to comment. Be safe.